Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the third panel of today. My name is Dominika Sietnicka, a co-press journalist, and our panel pertains to the local situation. Slaps under Polish regulations. Practical notions. Before I present you our guests, uh, I'll tell you that this is Enhancements of Media Freedom Panel, monitoring and education supported by Active Citizens National Fund, co-financed by Nor Norwegian funds. That has been the product placement. And we've got our guests. The closest sitting person, Krzysztof Plota, attorney at law who represents journalists and publishers in any kind of litigation, collaborates with Oko Press, Politica, the other guest, Jakub Kudwa, Ringer Axel Springer, attorney of law, head of the legal department. The third person, Joanna Szymańska, acting director of uh, Article 19 Europe into freedom of speech, and the fourth person, Zuzanna Nowicka, Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights, Freedom of Speech Department, PhD student at uh, Jagiellonian University. The first reference, the first panel, I'll quote, you don't have to remember it by heart. Roman Imielski said at some point, Media is not outside the legal scope. Court proceedings, litigations have always been there. It's a normal thing. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So the first question refers to what Mr. Imielski said. How can you tell the difference? This is something regular, something within the scope of uh, court litigation, settlements, part of public life. And what is SLAP? How do you recognize these situations? We can start with the people sitting on my right hand side, Pluta of Council. I'd like to express my gratitude for inviting me. I feel thrilled to be a part of this conference and to discuss these notions so very much important from the point of view of public interest. Answering your question, personal protection litigations, we have seen them for long. We have seen them always. And that's the future. You cannot avoid it. When we discuss slap, there is one important thing. You should tell the difference between slaps and regular uh, notions, regular suits. Uh, everybody has the right to protect their personal rights and rights of all kinds. So do not confuse regular litigation from slaps. So when is slap, in my opinion, when it exceeds some justified measure, when you can see that the demands targeted uh, at the victim exceed something that is regular, that is in line with similar court cases. A right, la, red light flashes when somebody requests sums of money that greatly exceed uh, the sums of money in si such situations. Polish courts, well, 10 or 20,000 zlotys. Uh, so when you have this kind of request, there's no red light flashing. But if somebody wants compensation like 50,000, 100,000, or a million Polish zlotys, because we've had instances like these in Poland, there is a, an obvious question. What's the reason for this happening? There's much larger sum uh, than the object of a dispute. 
because we've got the range of amounts. If you exceed specific measure, like requests related to apologies publication, in some other place than the original infringement uh, was supp supposedly happened. If you, it is requested to publish it on numerous occasions, more than once, m uh, meeting this kind of demand results in high costs when it comes to publication. And it's obvious that you want to intimidate the other uh, the other party. You want to instill their financial problems. Make want to go, make you want to make them go bankrupt. Another thing, another moment when you can speak about slap. There is uh, litigation. There is the climate. Uh, uh, when Clement knows that, uh, you know, it was truth, hoping that the publisher is unable to show that this is truth, this is abuse of law. It's apparent abuse of legal instruments to shut the mouths of journalists, to close the public debate, to keep it secret to torture journalists, briefly speaking. Thank you very much. Joanna Szymańska, Article 19, how do you define slaps? What are the most typical examples in your opinion? If we speak about local problems, Poland, we've spoken about this a lot, but uh, we've got some kind of Polish specificity, if you will. We are quite unusual compared to other countries. Slaps in other countries are mostly initiated by businesses or oligarchs. Private bodies. Only recently in Poland have we had a mass of summons from public institutions, state owned companies politicians associated with the, the ruling parties, ministers, ministries. It's worth highlighting that we've got this Polish specificity. We've been different compared to other countries. So what is a slab indicator? In Poland, there were two lawsuits filed. So one text or one opinion aired out on digital media or some kind of act. One person was uh, brought to court on the basis of civil code for infringement of personal rights and on the basis of uh, the Penal Code under the Article 212, uh, the infa in infamous one. So we suppose it's a kind of more strategic uh, approach and uh, one mode or one way does not suffice. A person is attacked with lawsuits and litigations uh, from several sides. This is definitely what made Polish uh, cases stand out. We also need to uh, pay attention to who the claimant and who the defendant uh, are. It might happen that a journalist uh, makes a mistake or it's intentional, but if we can see that this is the journalist or activist who is the target of the attack and on the other side there is either money or power, we need to consider whether it's a strategic action meant to threaten 
Britain, or perhaps it's uh, ja bym może nawiązała grounded. do tych słów dotyczących instytucji Let publicznych. Me refer to the words, czy w ogóle uh, państwa zdanie instytucje publiczne, opinion, czy wyobrażamy sobie takie sytuacje, kiedy ich roszczenia są uzasadnione, mogłyby pozywać, uh, miałyby, miałyby właśnie takie uzasadnione powody. And they could, uh, have the to, może może to sue. Bardzo chętnie, to jest temat, którym się zajmujemy w Fundacji Helsińskiej. That's uh, the topic we've been dealing with in the Helsinki Foundation. I don't want to focus on law too much because that's not the point. I would like to refer to the uh, European uh, Tribunal of Human Rights statement from March two years ago. The tribunal, the, the court, has said that if state institutions sue someone based on uh, civil rights are against uh, the freedom of speech. The court's decision was based on the fact that they have a number of opportunities to dismiss opinions formulated by journalists and activists. And there is also the economic argument. That's not the way it should be. We should not use taxpayers' money this way. And thirdly, press activists and uh, social media users fulfill the roles of uh, public watchdogs. Their actions are meant uh, for situations when there are various affairs, scandals, corruptions to highlight them. In this statement, there is a minor aspect which states that if it's business activity of a public entity, that's a different case in such a case as such litigation could be initiated because it's a matter of market competitiveness. We also have the case of a state forest as an institution they could, on one hand, use such an exception, but this is a state entity and uh, having monopoly in, in Poland. Uh, that's why we uh, cannot uh, talk about uh, their uh, competitive advantage. We also have a case of uh, an activist, uh, Ms. Radziborska, being sued for um, calling them criminals who lead us towards climate disaster. Recently, we have had quite a nice situation, and it was really rewarding. We had uh, a litigation uh, against uh, an individual and the court decided that the uh, decided that the case should be dismissed that uh, any statement could be against uh, the uh, european court's decision many courts are uh, open uh, to that and they follow certain standards however that's not always the case summing up I think in extreme cases, we can imagine situations when such a private lawsuit abused by state entities could be justified, but these are rare cases and I have never come across such a case. I partly agree and partly challenge your um, opinions, and I would like to focus on the word strategic. It may have different contexts. We can imagine that using it uh, in a part uh, of SLAP's definition is useful as it outlines specific situations. The first case is that someone who uh, is uh, the, the main protagonist of a feature would like to stop certain uh, opinions. Uh, is it slap? Is it not a slap? Perhaps this is a kind of slap. There are cases, uh, quite recent ones for us as the publishing house, when the entire state apparatus is 
engaged through various institutions or simply public money transferred to the institutions, apparently private, but used for handling one case or rather running a campaign against the media. Uh, these are independent media, typically. We can see it clearly in the communication of uh, government uh, entities. They say the German uh, media, the betraying media, whatever adjective uh, um, you can think of, they um, stimulate, they boost certain rhetorics, then uh, litigations instigated by various states or uh, quasi state institutions are fueled by state money and become a component of a strategy. The strategy is meant to uh, destroy, jeopardize, uh, or silence independent media. This is something that I would like to pay your attention to. We have had uh, several years of uh, experience of uh, silencing the media, muting them. Let's move on to the strategy. How can media and how do media defend against it and what does it, what does it look like in courts? So far, we haven't had any legal instruments to defend ourselves against slaps. We have only such instruments uh, like other people who want to defend their uh, personal uh, property. So far, journalists or press publishers could only demonstrate or try to demonstrate that what they wrote was true, that it was to the public interest, or that they wrote about it with due diligence and that they did their best to find the truth and that they used all relevant instruments. In my opinion, it's very important uh, when you have to defend uh, yourself against uh, slap. It's about disclosing, revealing slapping. The victim of slap, the target of slap, should never be left alone, should be supported by public opinion. In the discussions related to slaps, I always quote the example of a dispute uh, initiated between uh, uh, social uh, credit bank and a politician. It amounted to 5 million zloty um, to ban such activities. But that's not that's not uh, the case. That's not the point uh, to uh, to refer to credit unions. Politica was sued for five million uh, in 2004. Now it's a shocking amount, and 20 years back, it meant definitely much more. The editorial uh, team informed about such litigation and about ongoing court proceedings. Consequently, many other editorial uh, houses uh, started writing about it, publishing information about it. Many um, journalists uh, wrote that that was not the way it should be, that uh, credit unions shouldn't sue editorials for such huge amounts because it may result in the editorial going bankrupt. It triggered quite a positive uh, PR effect uh, for the um, defendant, but not for the claimant. The case continued throughout the, the following 14 years. There were uh, successive 
lawsuits initiated by persons related to credit unions. But such an amount was never covered by any of them. It was the level of around 10 or 20,000 uh, zlotas maximum. We keep on talking about reasonable demands and money. However, I have felt we focus on the very fact that engaging journalists into long-lasting court proceedings is a problem. Have you heard of any cases where disclosing slaps had a deterrent effect that the entities uh, making such uh, such uh, requirements decided to withdraw? Let me answer it from a different perspective. I often feel that it does not happen because uh, slaps that are most dangerous for medium and small-sized editorial uh, houses are those which are initiated by powerful institutions. Thinking about private litigations that uh, do not amount to to 5 million, but 150 million. And these are claims um, from private entities. We can also observe that not only the state or court uh, institutions are involved, but uh, also there are various PR measures involved, PR agencies, uh, troll farms in social media, and so on and so forth. I would like to point out that the opponents of the freedom of speech and free media also engage huge resources and measures in the non-legal layer, which makes it more difficult for us uh, to defend ourselves against such attacks. Zuzanna? Yes, answering uh, your question, how they defend uh, themselves using all possible measures from the perspective of the foundation, I can only say that these are people who do not have enough resources. That's the example of Rafał Remont, uh, the panelists uh, in the previous panel. The costs uh, in the first instance amounted to, to 2,000 for local journalists working on their own. This is huge money, which may uh, mean problems at work. The very mm, mm, fact that uh, they are not allowed, that they cannot pay for private services, mm, or that they need to use uh, such private services or that they need to uh, have court representation. This means very high financial burden. Knowing the draft directive two years ago, we were wondering we, uh, what tools could be used according to the Polish law to uh, Mm, combat slaps. We tried to convince the courts to use them, but unsuccessfully. In some penal proceedings, Warsaw courts are uh, willing to dismiss cases based on Article 212 without uh, the defendant's participation. And simply, it is um, in advance declared that a crime had not been committed. Soon the directive will become uh, effective and the time for its implementation uh, will um, start. It will be the starting point for the discussion and will have such instruments soon. What is your practice, how to explain to the court that this is a specific time of uh, of a claim, of a litigation, how often do courts recognize that this is not a standard case? Honestly speaking, 
In my proceedings, I have never referred to slaps because I thought it would mean wasting both my and the court's time because there is no such institution in the Polish uh, judiciary. Stating that something is or is not slap did not contribute to the progress of uh, court proceedings. It's going to change soon. But previously, it was meaningless. That's why I did not refer to such terminology or case. So what arguments uh, did you mention? The ones I have already enumerated. First and foremost, I tried to demonstrate that what the journalist wrote was true or it was uh, as close to the truth as possible, bearing in mind what instruments the journalist could use. I also uh, tried to prove that what the journalist uh, had written uh, had been important for the public uh, interest. Sometimes you can win uh, such cases if you refer to the important public interest. In order to settle based on such premises, you, it, it we didn't have to state whether it was or wasn't a slap. Even if the directive uh, enters into force, the issue of dismissing um, the uh, lawsuit or not will not be based on whether this is slap or not a slap. Now I would like to refer to what the directive uh, states. It will be important because the court deciding that something is a slap will be able to draw some consequences against the claimant, consequences not possible before. For example, granting covering the entire cost of the court's proceedings. In many cases, previously, it had been predetermined and covered only a fraction of the actual cost of the proceedings. Moreover, uh, the court would have uh, the right to um, decide that the defendant deserves some compensation or damages. Such cases often means uh, many years of stress and traveling. Moreover, the court will have the right to punish the claimant with a fine for abusing the law. I'm nodding because I do agree that uh, calling such a lawsuit uh, a slap uh, has not been so meaningful even quite recently. We've got article, uh, article uh, 226 uh, of the Code of uh, Civil Proceedings, which states that this is abusing of uh, procedural law. In such a case, the uh, court may adjudge higher costs of the proceedings. We tried to persuade courts to consider a slap and abuse of procedural law. I would like to leave it um, for the time being. We were unsuccessful, but there are some harbingers of uh, courts uh, noticing the problem, and uh, the court refers to the recommendations of the European Commission stating that slaps are um, um, anti slap instruments are a kind of soft law. No negative consequences, and the Polish court should have the indication how to deal with the problem that they have perceived. Of counsel, would you like to add something? Yes, there are things like these. When you refer to slap, when justify uh, slaps, and uh, journalists don't know how to identify slap, sometimes it's a benefit, a detriment. Sometimes you need to prove slap. How are we supposed to uh, prove strategic attitude of the other party? The directive has not yet been implemented, but there is a th um, thinking. Uh, mm, 
That this is something that has been pre-planned. Recently, we have involved uh, in the opinions of Amicus Curia, the friend of the court of law, and we didn't refer whether this is slap or not. In most cases that we have had, it was enough to refer to international standards of freedom of speech or European Human Rights Court rulings to indicate that it's ungrounded because it related to allowed criticism. A standard uh, informed politicians need to have greater resilience to criticism. It's allowed. It was enough. This is what we referred to. And I wanted to notice that not only did we file opinions, but we also observed some court trials, but these were court trials in Warsaw. So I realized that we are a large-scale international organization. Not always do we know exactly what happens in smaller uh, regions, towns. It's quite possible that the situation is difficult. The things that we tackled, that we observed, we could see a positive trend. Courts have referred to the international standards in their rulings. And uh, the opinions. It was the process that continues, needs to continue. Courts of law and judges. Courts should pay greater attention. Excellent that you diversified between Warsaw and big cities. As I mentioned, foundation is engaged in local uh, implementation is not always possible. I'm going to share two anecdotes with you. Uh, sometimes we've got the organization standpoint. We sometimes, uh, and whenever we uh, join the proceedings, we always refer to them. And this is uh, um, tougher skins of politicians case that was referred to you. So the people who act in public should be more open, more tolerant to criticism because the public uh, has the right to assess their activities. And one of the courts interpreted this uh, standard in opposition because we cannot uh, criticize politicians because they won't be selected, elected for the next uh, terms of office if they and they lose job and they will feel sorry. So when we read it, me and Mr. Shemashko, hardly did we believe that. But still, it was the argument that was taken into consideration when uh, administering the court ruling. And the standards of the European Court, um, if this is an uh, assessment, you cannot, you don't have to prove that it's right, because assessment is assessment. So it, 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 it's my opinion, no logics to that. And one of the local journalists said or commented activities of a politician saying that he is sick. And they said, it's not true. And the journalist who was required to uh, justify it. So we were wondering whether this politician is really sick by measuring his body measurements. So we hope uh, 
to see the directive act active. So there's a long way before we start using the tools stipulated in this uh, directive, but the very fact that the lawmakers have created something, it's a good thing. I'd like to refer to what the four speaker said. It's great that directive was accepted and it will be active. I'd like to share my thoughts. There's one thing that I want to share. What is most important for me, we've got a legal act. This or that way, it debunks a myth that we've got in Poland. And the myth is as follows. Many people believe, many lawyers agree with this. I can hear it in lectures, even by law professors. When we sue somebody against press in the West and the press wrote uh, some lies, they go bankrupt. I've heard it on numerous occasions. This directive, the slab directive, has been accepted. And this very fact clearly shows that the ideal that someone to attain does not really exist, that ideals do not exist. So if there is a mistake, you can destroy it completely and make it go bankrupt. Polish legal system is based on different provisions, which has been demonstrated by the Supreme Court. It's a philosophy, a, phys a, a, a civil litigation is not designed to destroy somebody. It is to return to some balanced state that had existed before press materials were published. If this infringed somebody's personal uh, rights and goods, this state was tripped, this balance was tripped. And if it was the case, it was in unlawful, so the court of law is to bring this balance state again, not to destroy somebody else. So directive clearly states it. Court proceedings, if you want to destroy somebody in civil litigation, is abuse of law. This is a, a wonderful thing to have this directive. My question pertains to the entities, slappers. It's about press. So what do they make use of in their publications? It's our experience. When we prepare a material, we do fact-checking, facts have been checked, we don't publish something that we are not certain of, but still it's obvious for us that something may happen, the heroes from the text want to instill some litigation, do something, so so the lawyer will be looking through the text, looking for things to see. So that's the question. What is the strategy of journalists, publishers, to protect against? Jakub? What kind of strategy? We've got the strategy, which is the right strategy, because this is the strategy designed by us. What is the strategy? Just a few points that are most important from the point of view of journalistic activity. So-called occupational health and safety. It's related with robust work. Fact-checking is the basic thing. The opinions of all the protagonists, the heroes of the drama, as they call it in literature. Authorization questions are also important. So there is a group of basic things that you should check at the beginning. In my experience, slightly goes against of what the conference is all about. 
media win most of the court proceedings. What is the threat for media is not whether we write a real true article and sometimes we make a blunder. What is a threat is the fact that there are bodies in the market, private and state-owned. The entities that they organize bring in a legal action, and this is rabbit chasing rather than rabbit catching, if I can use this kind of uh, liter literature-related comparison. So the first line of defense being a robust journalist and second of all a strong media to counteract these kind of dangers. I haven't answered your question briefly. Only recently have we had trainings for local journalists in six cities of Poland. We've got journalists who have had these experiences, slap experiences, they've been slap victims. What to do, not to be sued, don't write anything was the answer. The problem with slap is that if you, if you observe standards, we don't have any guarantee that somebody refrains from suing us. And the judicial system is imperfect. We can always meet a court of law that does not want to use or doesn't know the standards. There's no guarantee that we can win. I agree with you. No doubt, editorial teams do anything. They fact check. They've got legal departments to check whether these are articles related to serious problems, uh, investigative journalist, this is m even more difficult. I agree. Whatever we do, but we'll face slaps, because that's the objective of slap. The objective is not to win in court, but the very fact that you bring in a legal action especially on the basis of the penal code. And penal code proceeding continue for three, four, five years, in pandemic times even longer. So it was even more prolonged. A, a journalist or a, an activist, they face this kind of uh, litigation. And there is something in the back of their head. They have been sued and there is a danger that they might lose and this is the freezing effect we might abuse this notion but it still exists because there is this awareness in the back of your head it's like you know you, you, you're it's always on your mind and we speak about financial costs, about money, it costs a lot, but mental costs are also huge. And the, the burden associated with the situation, well, we speak about people who face more than one slab, might be dozens or so, so it's a great burden for somebody's mentality. Just one brief comment. I thought to myself, slap as a problem, how to uh, well, the problem of slap is not that something untrue was written. We wrote the truth and there is no weapon against it. So the only option is to refrain from writing. So what is the slapper's touch point if they know very well that facts were presented, so, for example, they cling to assessment saying that this is exceedance of the boundaries of criticism, of critical opinions, less characteristic for Poland, but most characteristic for slaps in general. They want to exclude the judge to prolong the deadlines. So this is unduly long procedure, which is quite characteristic. 
what can we do? Not to write? I like this example, and it's a very sad example. Katrin Belton, that was mentioned at yesterday's panel, she was sued because of her Putin's People book, and there was a sentence that did not exist in the book. So this is pain of slaps. You can use anything against you. There are different methods, multiplication of legal bases, what you mentioned, so it uh, impacts your defense line. You need to use supportive organizations. We've got civil penal litigation, request for correction or dementi, public administration use, which has been popular recently. Competition codes they use, there is an adversary, they, whenever there is a press article, they sue us because he alleges that we infringed competition rules and regulations. He says that this is a private entity, a company, so as a company they can be sued by some other uh, company representatives, other entrepreneurs. So it's pretty typical. A president of uh, personal data protection, another institution that they refer to, and they exert pressure. So this is the rabbit chasing, as I said. What Susanna Nowicka was speaking about, there was this court that misinterpreted the thick skin of uh, politicians, and this politician that was thick. No, I mixed two court cases, two instances. So the question, more examples of situations when an activist or a publisher or a journalist loses in court. In your opinion, it was not justified. But, for example, the, the court was not competent or too formal. Mr. Pluta of Council, the first instance, last year's case, there was the court justification. It was appellate court, so high-level court in Poland. The, the lady judge wrote, caricature does not infringe people's personal rights. Briefly, what was that all about? By very nature, it infringes by the very nature because this is criticism. What the dispute was about, whether this criticism included in this drawing picture, was it lawful or unlawful? But the fact of infringement people's uh, rights lies in the very nature of this caricatural uh, sketch. Sometimes courts don't understand the regulations themselves, as you can see. Most of the people have heard this example because they joined the previous panel, but there are many people online, and this is the example that I want to air out. Rafał Remont. He was uh, uh, sentenced for libel because he asked questions when collecting data. And when he won in front of uh, the Supreme Court supported by ombudsman, a journalist not only has right but also the duty to collect, to harvest material. And both in instances didn't notice that. It was about questions, not... Uh, uh, the opinions that he issued, but it's difficult. The only case that comes to my mind is uh, quite uh, specific. In the uh, appellation court, there was uh, the judge's uh, statement in the substantiation to the sentence. It was about nepotism in a state treasury company, I mean, the content of an article uh, describing nepotism 
in a state treasury company, the judge considered writing an article about some things going wrong in the state treasury company, an attack on the, against the government. Media in the democratic state of law should not uh, do, according to this uh, decision. I can also remember an example of a case. The foundation, as an NGO, decided to join the case. Fortunately, because uh, there is a judge who had never had the defamation case before. It's uh, the state forest uh, institution's defamation. In my opinion, it's quite a specific case and shouldn't really happen. The defendant pointed out that the statement was made during the consultation carried out by the European Commission. There is also the uh, right uh, for a petition, but the judge uh, asked the journalist, do you think it's right uh, to publish such not nice things? I don't want to criticize uh, the substantiation, but uh, I am familiar with cases where the judge appointed uh, a linguist expert to find out whether the particular statement was defamation or not. It shouldn't happen because uh, uh, this is the judge who should decide it and not an external expert. This shows a lack of understanding what uh, uh, the crime is about and consequently using various tools which are not always relevant and but could facilitate uh, such uh, assessment. We mentioned several times over the discussion that uh, the whole system of using state resources to slap media or activists is a phenomenon which has become quite widespread over recent years. So my question is, in your practice, can you see that since the power has changed, do you notice any differences? Sorry uh, to pop in, but uh, during the previous panels we have already mentioned it and we should reiterate that there are still cases uh, taken over by the new power, but uh, initiated by Zbigniew Ziobro as the Minister of Justice, and now the new Minister of Justice is uh, to handle them. They have not been uh, withdrawn or they have not ended. The same applies to state treasury companies. There are more of such examples. That's the issue which should be taken into consideration as quickly as possible. All these slaps that uh, have recently been initiated by state treasury companies or power representatives should be uh, cancelled, should be withdrawn, and that was not always the case. Just to share our experience of our uh, publishing house, uh, there are such entities that decided to withdraw their uh, litigations, but there are some uh, lawsuits that I wouldn't like to to be withdrawn, and I would like them to be settled by the first instance court. It often happens that in the previous period, there were severe campaigns against media and journalists to undermine their trustworthiness. The first instance sentence is very important for 
journalists to show, uh, yes, I won the case, I was right, not only in such a context that I have the right uh, to the freedom of speech, but what I wrote was uh, substantiated. So the, case, uh, the cases are quite complex sometimes. We often say that it's also like a case of uh, defamation uh, and uh, damaging reputation. What are the methods that the journalists and publishers have to defend themselves? They can announce their victory and show that they were right, that they were uh, victims, that they fell victims of the slap machinery. Previously, you mentioned that media are sometimes called German ones or are accused of not publishing the truth. The former minister uh, could write that uh, it's bullshit full of fake news and that he would uh, never answer the questions asked by the specific journalist. Are there any legal opportunities to combat it? And do activists and journalists and media use them? That's a difficult question. And I'm quite surprised to hear it because I don't know how to answer it. I don't know what can be done. Sometimes we as the media decide to sue people who express what we call excessive opinions. It's a challenge because we need to um, analyze whether uh, the freedom of speech of expression does not really apply. I have been working uh, in my institution for 20 years, and I feel that whenever we talk about uh, journalists, uh, the claimants say, uh, well, that uh, it's uh, um, about uh, some links, and if it's a female journalist, it's about a sentimental relationships. How to handle it? Well, sometimes we Sue, but the judiciary system in Poland uh, is slow, so it's going to take longer than two years. Now we have uh, cases, we end cases that were initiated in 2017, so this is quite a slow process. When I said three, four years, uh, it uh, looks that I was quite optimistic. I don't know uh, the answer to your uh, question, which is right, but I would like to um, refer to corrections, especially when the information in the press release is true and the information in the correction is not true. So it's about uh, distorting uh, the function of the correction, and it's not about hearing the other side, but giving the space to the um, entity having wrong intentions. The point is, but, and uh, it's worrying from our perspective, is that courts uh, take such interpretation. There is a judge who does not allow for such situations, but if such correction is not published and the editor-in-chief is supposed to publish it, the court will urge to do so. How does the court, what arguments do courts use? Uh, they quote the act on the press law, and there is a catalog of reasons why you can refuse uh, corrections. However, a correction as such, according to press law, is defined as referring to uh, the information which is not true or not reliable. Just two sentences from me. 
It happens that a person described in the article is requested to express their opinion. The person ignores the journalist's question and after publication uh, requests correction. This is the, the abuse of law, so perhaps according to the Mm, based on the directive, such situations will end. As I have mentioned before in referring to corrections, we need to say there are too many legal grounds to sue journalists. So what could we do to make things easier to mm, prevent uh, several lawsuits against one group of articles? Te sprostowania oczywiście są często wybierane the corrections are often selected by claimants. They often end within six months. That's a good result. But we need to remember that correction as such has become a formal institution. This is a way of uh, giving a correction. If it's formally correct, we are obliged to publish it. It's bad because it has a negative impact on the journalist's work. If such corrections are published as a result of court sentence, it turns out that uh, some people only see that what the journalist uh, wrote was not true. Consequently, the readers uh, might misunderstand the situation and such information should be uh, removed. It causes more severe burden to the media and to the court as well. I would like to come back to the directive. We have mentioned the opportunities it offers and how it can help in proceedings, in lawsuits. Let's discuss the limitations, what we lack. I can see an analysis of the Helsinki Foundation of Human Rights, and there are plenty of conclusions on what the Polish law really needs, what successive proposals should be submitted. Susanna. From our perspective, there are two primary issues that should be employed throughout the directive implementation. Since the EU's competences are limited, it does not apply to criminal cases. Slaps in Poland are often uh, criminal proceedings, uh, uh, 135 uh, um, defamation of um, the president and other articles as well. We would like the solutions uh, in the directive to be included in penal proceedings and administrative ones as well. I may not be fully aware of what the situation looks like, but in Hungary, uh, this is GDPR uh, slapping, which is a major problem. Moreover, the director applies to transborder cases. The definition is quite broad. It states that the case will be considered uh, transborder unless uh, both parties are domiciled in the same state. So uh, then it applies to the jurisdiction of the specific country. Many local uh, cases, however, will not allow for using such instruments by judges. So these are the two major drawbacks we have identified. But it will all depend on correct implementation. I have also heard that while working on the legal instrument uh, 
discussed yesterday, uh, Daphne Carolina Galicia was uh, foundation was involved. It's the directive and not an uh, ordinance or resolution. The directive leaves room for implementation and somehow interpretation. That was the hope that throughout the directive's implementation, uh, the member states will operate broadly. The recommendations of the European Commission on SLAPs announced on the same day as the draft di directive, it clearly states that this is the problem of penal and administrative uh, proceedings and not all SLAPs are of transport in nature. Our first task is to extend it in Poland. If we were to implement the directive as such, in the majority of cases, it won't help the defendants. There is also the recommendation of the Council of Europe, uh, which is only the recommendation. The two documents can be treated as uh, complementary. As Zuzanna mentioned, we should approach the whole jurisdiction and everything that can apply to slaps in Poland. We could try to introduce the laws that would respond to um, correspond to Polish reality. That's uh, why we have uh, such a provision related to defamation, 212-216. It's quite frustrating because we've been discussing it and mentioning it in Poland over and over again. This, this is what international standards or the freedom of uh, expression state, that it shouldn't be like that. It's important to say that the directive is there, but also that the regulations should be adapted to the Polish reality. Referring to your first question, uh, Dominika, how to differentiate between uh, slap and the lawsuit against uh, uh, personal rights. Uh, yesterday we had heard about uh, spot the slap from the wild. This is about the recommendations uh, from the Council of Ministers and Council of Europe that could help uh, judges differentiate between uh, slaps and standard uh, litigations or lawsuits. The recommendations of the Council of Europe can be very helpful as they contain a catalog of various uh, features. Uh, disproportional aspects, many simultaneous litigations, we should pay attention to it, whether we are to evaluate whether this is or it's not a slap. It's also about training the judges according to the recommendations. They have to become more sensitive to it. If we have very well implemented directive and wonderful regulations, uh, and early dismissal of case, and you can find for uh, with costs of litigation if judges are too cautious because they have doubts whether something is or is not a slap. Two words about uh, libel and def uh, uh, defamation. We are the majority of the EU state. Uh, that's got this institution of libel. No, no, few of them, six of them. The recommendations from the Councils of Europe like eight years ago or even older inform 
that in the context of libel or defamation, there should be no privileged uh, situation for state um, authorities. Slaps. Other regulations, how often do they use it? So defamation of the head of the state or religious feelings, abuse, offense. We don't have this kind of statistics, how often these things happen, how often slap of this kind happen. But I'd say that um, yesterday I was grateful, well, when we opened the conference, there was Deputy Minister Zuzana rudzińska Blust, who mentioned Article 196, uh, the uh, offense of religious feelings. We require this to be removed from regulations. Like, for example, three activists created the Virgin Mary in uh, the colors of a rainbow. It's a typical slap. It came to an end after five years, but it reached the Supreme Court's level. So we are involved in this uh, question of regulations related to the offense of religious feelings. We shouldn't have these regulations here. We try to check the statistics, but gathering this kind of information is really difficult. NGOs and public opinion and media get only a fraction uh, of court cases, the, those that reach the top of absurdity, something that is on everybody's lips. Polish organizations in general have more data about this. But at the European level, we've got a problem harvesting uh, the data and concrete stats when it comes to specific regulations and litigations. We don't have stats, but I'd like to quote the regulations that wasn't quoted here. It's absurd. Mr. Mashlak, who tweeted the border guards' behavior, and he was accused of uh, of of defamation of uh, public officers, but it should be only when uh, they are exercising uh, their duties. It was or, and they use and uh, the, the legal provisions uh, stipulate differently. Uh, he didn't make it difficult to exercise professional duties of a public officer. So how come a tweet can insult uh, and make it difficult for professional duties to be performed by the border guards. According to your experience, courts of law, do they refer to this discussion, like stepping back from 212 article? In this concrete case, the qualification was uh, changed. Uh, the uh, uh, mm, court believed it was absurdity. Courts get the case related to Article 112. It's not that frequent, so the local courts see this kind of case very of, for the first time very often. I don't want to criticize them uh, because lowest level judges do not even realize what kind of discussion has been going on for so long. A very important question, a discussion on reforms when it comes to the freedom of speech, to give it a more general name. We should put yet another question on the table, showing that something is true in front of the court of law, vis-a-vis -vis the court of law. 212 penal regulations and press regulations 
uh, press regulations to a smaller extent, but penal codes regulations, a journalist must say that this is true, it has to justify, uh, bring evidence that something is true, whatever is written in the article. Court ruling goes a different direction. They don't request uh, the uh, burden of true, the burden of proof indicating that something is true. They need to show that uh, this is credible information. So in the course of discussion, when it comes to uh, personal rights protection, we should think about certain things that are very important from the point of view of public interest. So the request to have the burden of proof to show that something is true when it is true is an excessive burden because in some cases it is impossible. But if we take the principle, if you cannot prove something, stay quiet. It was in Poland for dozens of years. We won't be able to discuss certain things, and discussion about things is important from the point of view of uh, public interest. So one theme, Zuzanna Nowicka spoke about GDPR use for slapping. Has this happened already in Poland? Do we ha have we had this, these kind of instances? Yes, we have had cases like these. It was the infamous one publicly famous, Jacek Kurski, the CEO of public, uh, Polish Public Television, and his COVID test. He purported that his personal uh, data protection right was uh, infringed. He visited Eurovision Junior Contest when he was positively tested for COVID. It's the first time I've heard about this. The respondent, well, wrong word. Agora was charged. There was the defendant here, and it was Personal Data Protection Office that was uh, in the case. Uh, this does not happen often, although there is the press clause which allows media process personal data without the consent of the interested party. And press archives. So, old materials, they request to remove personal data of specific people, like GDPR is referred to. On the other hand, we've got uh, human rights uh, court regulations at the European level that states that press archives are a very important element of a public debate and a kind of record of history. It's not the role of the court of law, law to exercise censorship over the archives of all kinds. 20 minutes before the end of the panel, so Q&A time, we've got a few questions. Dzień dobry, ja się nazywam Piotr Szymlewicz, jestem przewodniczącym Związku Zawodowego Związkowa Alternatywa i my właściwie regularnie jesteśmy ofiarami slap. We are regular slap victims. Public insurance entity, our leader was fired because of pathology. She was charged, I was charged, penal and civil, penal and civil. In her case, my case, illegal strike. GDPR, when we had a referendum, we didn't uh, meet the requirements, uh, series of motions, whether we're an association. So I don't want to go into many details. 
mam wątpliwości co do tego, co się nawet pojawia no teraz doubts. w tych nowych przepisach rekomendowanych The new anti-slap recommendations. I was in Karpacz Economic Forum. I said to the president, this is authoritarian uh, power and they took the verbatim to call two days after. And another motion, uh, another litigation. So if we want to introduce a fast track to discontinue proceedings in a quick way to diminish the cost, We've got uh, uh, separate litigations. We had 10 or 15 uh, national insurance funds uh, cases. So is it like that? So if the company that wants to slap ZUS for three years, they will have 48 instead of 10. 45 will be dismissed. Three will stay. If you shoot at random, you will hit something sooner or later. So how about this kind of proposal? I'm a practitioner. I spent thousands of Polish lotus in these instances against Zeus. If slap is justified, the slapper undergoes penal responsibility. This includes uh, imprisonment. What is also very important when it comes to uh, trade unions, this responsibility should rest not with the company, but the person of the president of the board, because 50,000 slot is for ZUS National Insurance Office, it's a little, not much money, but if Ms. Uścińska were to pay 50,000 złotych, that would be painful. It's a long story, but uh, you should look through the regulations. SLAP refers to many regulations, more than 212. When we speak about trade unionists, Article 1 about trade unions is questioned independence from the public authorities and employer. It's questions in mass. ZUS, uh, public insurance, they ask what is the representation, was it the right election, are these digital or regular or scanned, scanned signatures? 50 court cases, 46 were dismissed, and three, okay, let's carry on. And this is the end of story, because we invest time and money. So the question is, fast track, isn't this too little? Shouldn't we have some penal uh, responsibility against slappers, that is, natural persons that are the heads of the institutions? It was a long question with lots of examples. It's difficult to answer to this question. Would it be possible? Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, you need to know that a legal system is a complex system, and it pertains to all slabs. We told you about a number of ideas, but we need to remember there is no single answer to complex problems. What you were saying, the ideas that you indicated, there are certain weaknesses, the right for courts. On the one hand, we can also imagine abuse of the regulations by the other party. There is no easy answer to said. What is the responsibility for slapping? I can't tell. I think about, uh, you know, try, like bringing them together. In organizational matters, there's one attorney of law, especially if he's your friend. They don't have to go to 46 uh, uh, courtrooms, but they should be amassed into one. It, it is, you know, uh, off the cuff answer to your question, but there is no good solution. Anybody else? Can I add to that? Penal responsibility. I don't know whether it is the best. The directive stipulates possibility of imposing funds, fines for slapping. So there is an idea. 
of what it should look like. So there is a question that refers to the previous question. Can you imagine imposing the ban on uh, slapping from public institutions? Would it solve some of the problems? We won't be objective in what we're saying. Yes, it would be. Less of a question, more of a comment. Dominika Sitnicka, her examples. One civil litigation, my personal one, uh, and personal rights. And there was strange use of law, because the law may not be bad, but you can abuse or misuse regulations. So we have this kind of litigation. It was not a directive, but ETPC regulations. Archives are protected. Yes, there are requests to remove the data from archives. We don't respond to that, or we say we don't uh, touch archives. We wait for somebody to, to summon us, but there was one uh, instance when the verdict was removed by the Supreme Court. Two instances called duplicated obvious mistakes. And some articles did it infringe personal rights, but they requested us to remove it from archives. And we reached the Supreme Court, and we clearly say that this is wrong. So there's mal, uh, judicial malpractice. There are different judges. And an interesting example, Article 196, described by me before. Pinczyce in Kozieguowy, there is a hooligan, that's the end of the world, uh, um, backwater. There was a boy, a hooligan, intoxicated, inebriated. He destroyed a cross standing by the road, which is privately owned. A local parish person wanted to join in. The court checked who was the owner. It was not the parish, but the natural person that was the owner. And the natural person didn't want to sue this person because uh, he apologized five times. He uh, mended the cross, but there's appellate court because uh, they are wondering whether the parish is the victim because uh, Częstochowa bishop said that they should act and they used this uh, regulation on uh, violation, uh, on insult of uh, religious rights. Article 96, some organizations look for people who want to feel insulted on religious grounds and take part in the litigation. So there's, for example, a manifestation, there were religious symbols used. I don't know the case. 96, it's an absurdity because there are other regulations. The penal code is rich. so. Destruction of assets, you can use some other paragraphs to run after people, to go after people. Not necessarily do you have to use the religious feelings insult. So this is the problem with this regulation. Even if you can say that something has been justified, like hooligans' behavior, destruction of assets, there are other regulations. Your attitude can uh, be different. This regulation, this one is unwanted. We are not saying that we give people right to discriminate on the basis of somebody else's religion because there are other regulations that protect people against religious discrimination and instilling hatred 
of violence on the basis of religion. So there are other regulations that are sufficient and enough for these kind of uh, cases. Can I ask one more question? Can we see any uh, changes? The prosecutor's office felt somehow obliged to pursue such cases. Can you see a difference, any major change? With, as for the Rainbow Virgin Mary and the case uh, in March, the prosecutor's office in Płock withdrew, but uh, that's uh, not uh, the case because there were subsidiary uh, prosecutors. This is the example that showing something has changed, but we do not have enough data uh, to, to show that it does. Yes, if there is the subsidiary uh, auxiliary uh, prosecutor, that's not that easy. But how to identify slab? That was the first question we asked. Uh, there are some organizations which in its statute have uh, preparing strategic lawsuits, and that's what they are called. Ordo Iuris is one of them. Its statute states that uh, the organization is going to develop such lawsuits that will develop uh, case law toward in the direction required by the organization, meaning responsibility based on Article 196, abortion, and so on and so forth. These are standard slaps, uh, but there is not always the target, the victim. These are standard lawsuits meant for strategic settlements uh, developing the case law. Patrycja Maciejewicz, Gazeta Wyborcza. I was dealing with slabs uh, during the Reuters Institute uh, um, grant. I prepared some guidelines for a newsroom to either limit the opportunities to get a slab uh, or uh, to deny such cases. One of the suggestions was to sue the slapper for defamation if someone accuses you of violating the journalist's uh, um, rules. You can sue them for defamation. Can you imagine such a situation uh, that you instigate mutual lawsuits when it comes to the Polish law and resources of newsrooms in this area. It will turn up that uh, state treasury companies will complain they are slapped by journalists. Let me start by saying that uh, uh, penal uh, defamation should be uh, removed. Uh, it should be done based on civil law. Would anybody uh, like to comment on it? However, there are some exceptional cases, not exceptional situations. I am familiar with one such case from my private practice, but uh, the result was not what we really expected. Can I ask you why? The court decided that the journalist uh, has a public profession, and it was, you know, the, the thick skin case. Any questions from the audience? It's not a question, but, uh, you know, more of, or of, a, of a summary and one more example of some strange uh, court decisions. Zuzanna mentioned uh, the thick person's case, Piotr Kicela, Tygodnik Siedlecki, I'm a freelance journalist. Throughout my career, 
Episod bycia sprawozdawcą sądowym. I had a, quite a long episode of uh, writing reports from courts. It was before the neo uh, judges had been appointed. In miała bardzo duży zresztą też during my career I came across one judge who found some comments of the district court really uh, ridiculous. The cases were over, uh, were either dismissed or resent for uh, assessment. The referenced judge sentenced an individual. It was not an activist or journalist, but a retired teacher who posted a comparison in social media. It was about someone of an important person behaving like a holy cow, and the person was sentenced. I would like to say that, you know, slaps are one thing, but if the level of judges adjudicating in regional courts is low, is low, and they will be reluctant to understand and you know, uh, such uh, a phrase as holy cow should be understood by those who graduated from secondary schools, not to mention those who graduated from universities. But unless they understand what it's all about, we cannot hope for any improvement of the situation. Anybody willing to refer to it? Albo czy są jeszcze komentarze z sali? Any other comments or questions? How do you uh, perceive the relationship between slaps and the whistleblowers uh, uh, act? In our cases, we often uh, refer to the directive that has not become effective in Poland yet, but these are some convergent areas. Do you suppose we can protect whistleblowers who are often slapped? Uh, um, at the uh, journalists uh, or their jobs levels. Oczywiście trudny temat, bardzo trudny i zupełnie nowy w tym momencie. A challenging and new topic. The act is now subject to intragovernmental consultations. Raczej postrzegam ją pozytywnie. I am quite positive uh, about it in general, but how uh, will it contribute to proceedings? It definitely will somehow. The very fact that we mention whistleblowers is uh, a fact that uh, they can hope for some protection. Uh, recently, when I tried to analyze the case, there was no direct link between uh, proceedings or lawsuits against such people and being a whistleblower, but I might be wrong because it was some time ago. Uh, my colleague mentioned some regional or uh, uh, district uh, courts. Uh, those uh, in Myszków uh, or in Warsaw are uh, completely different. It's not about complaining because we can see that some things are going into the right direction, but it's possible because some social factors and the political class have identified a problem that needs to be solved. The regulation saying that if 212, it goes to all district courts. Minor ones, minor courts had no experience in that at all. All cases based on Article 212 were sent to the uh, uh, district courts, uh, but only whenever there is uh, um, a regional court. 
czy sędzia jest kompetentny. Previously, when I was going to court, I was wondering whether the judge was competent, but only recently I had to check whether this is a new judge and if this is really a judge capable of issuing independent uh, and impartial decisions. These were like kangaroo courts. Uh, we heard the attorney at law uh, and how to identify uh, what a slap is. Analyzing it, now I understand that I had slap um, cases several years ago. A district court in Myszkow decided that the cost is 30,000. However, the Court of uh, Appeal uh, had an experienced judge who said it was nothing. The uh, allegations were invented. It might be surprising that you can uh, defend yourself, but again, it might turn out that the court is not very well prepared for such sentences. I quoted an example of uh, banning to remove the, the archives, the files. And another interesting example, just to, to supplement, we can all see that uh, the burning landfills have become a major problem. It's like a mob. Several years ago, I uh, was uh, describing such cases. And the uh, claim amounted to 300,000. So we ridiculed that it should amount to 1 million. The company paid it, and the initial um, cost was 15,000. It was simply to insult, to uh, threaten the the journalist. The court decided to dismiss the case, uh, uh, stating that the information was uh, not true, but uh, corrected afterwards. However, it was all about social interest. But the second instance, the uh, Court of Appeal behaved in a strange way. I call it uh, symmetrism, meaning um, the first sentence is either very positive or very negative, and in the second instance, there is a major change. In the first instance, uh, 16,000 uh, was uh, refunded, but the um, Court of Appeal of the second instance was decided that, unfortunately, you have to pay 15,000 compensation and the company will pay back 15,000 of uh, the court costs. It means uh, the bottom line was zero, though not really so, because I had to pay, I had to cover the cost. However, it does not only apply to court symmetrism in journalism, is detrimental. You touched upon very important uh, procedural aspect in penal uh, cases related to uh, libel, defamation. It's the regional court, while the latter ones, ones are in the district court. It's about the court's rank and the experience, uh, the experience of judges. That's a paradox and something that should not happen. There is no time, unfortunately, because our panel should have ended at 3. That's why I need to close our panel. If there are any cases you would like to discuss, uh, you could do it uh, informally. I hope I can uh, encourage people to contact you on your behalf. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank my panelists and the audience. Thank you. And the next panel is going to start in 30 minutes.